Now in this video, we're just going to look at the HubSpot step, find contact, or we can apply this to find contact, find deal, find company, but we'll just look into find contact. And the problem that I've been asked a lot of is when a automation triggers, they need to either grab this person's information, let's say based on their email, but if they don't exist, we need to create them. So I just wanted to tackle this specific step. Let's get into it. So we're going to use HubSpot as our CRM here. So HubSpot. And what we want to do is we just type in find and we can find deal, we can find ticket, contact. We're gonna do contact for today. Continue, we're gonna link the account, continue. And here we go. So now this, this gets into the nitty gritty. So the first property that we're gonna search for and actually the only property is going to be the email. Let's say for this example, the email is a value that we get coming in from the trigger. So let's let's look up email. Uh, ah, email confirmed. All right, this is what we want. And if we wait a second, it'll populate a second field. There we go, right here. First search property value. So we're going to search, and and we'll just search. We'll just search this. Um, we'll search for someone's email. Great. We don't. We can add other other properties here. Uh, we don't need to. All I want to do is, is search for the individual's email um, because if they have a different email, then we'll count that as a different person. Okay, so let's keep looking at this. Any additional properties that we want to retrieve can be selected here. And maybe I want to know their number. Great, so we can add that or as many other properties that we want. Now, there's this little button at the bottom here. Create HubSpot contact if it doesn't exist yet. All right, and so what this step is gonna do is it's gonna first search for that email that we provided. And if it doesn't find anything, well, then it'll create it. So now you'll see that once we click that box, we have all of these HubSpot parameters that we can give. And this is where we can fill in any additional information that we wanna add. Now let's say we wanted to update information for the contact, right? That's Maybe that's why we are searching or we're finding this, this contact in HubSpot. We want to find them and update their information, update their phone number, let's say. All right, so what we would do is use this step to find and click the find or create button. And we would only, in this first step, we would only populate the values that would already exist in HubSpot for that contact, in this case, or for the deal, or for the ticket, right? So chances are they probably have their first or last name. So if we have availability into that information, we would populate that. We'd populate maybe the existing status that they're in. In terms of the new information, we would want to add an update step reason is because let's say it does find the information, right? It finds the information. We have that person. We'll add an update step right now and it'll update it. Great. The other scenario is that it creates the HubSpot contact and we associate all the information, including the new phone number. Well, we'll still have another updater step anyway that will update it. So it's, it's kind of updating twice. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter, but it'll save you from having to input all those properties in multiple times. So we can just take a look and see what this HubSpot update step kind of looks like. And we want to update contact, link the account. And for this object ID, we will get this from the ID of the previous step, right? This is the ID of the person. So this is how we can very easily update, find or create a person, update their information, and that's how we can do it.